Alright, this was bound to happen one of these days. Here's my full ranking of all the bosses in Elden Ring from worst to best, which will include main bosses, secret bosses, field bosses, mini bosses, and whatever else that has a health bar at the bottom. Now, quite a few of these bosses have many different variations, so how will I handle all of that? Well, if it's like Magma Worms, where there's one type that has only one face and another type that has two phases, I'll just rank the one with two phases. I might make some exceptions for other variations, like I think Draconic Tree Sentinel and Loretta are unique enough from the basic Tree Sentinels. I also want to say that I've played this game an unhealthy amount. I've finished it eight times now. I absolutely love the game, but don't think for a second I won't shit on its worst bosses. So, let's begin doing that. You don't have the right, oh you don't have the right, therefore you don't have the right, oh you don't have the right. This boss is the physical embodiment of all of my least favorite aspects of Elden Ring. It's a boss taken from Dark Souls 1, it's used repeatedly throughout the game, it forces you to run away from it by spreading rot everywhere, it's also just a worse version of Earth Tree Avatars, which there are too many of anyway. And, well, it's just a boring boss. I always get stuck in a loop of being forced to run away from the boss due to Scarlet Rot, and then not being able to run back in because he's spamming these projectiles that can't be avoided if you're close. Also, obviously this is a headless stray demon, but I'd say if there was only one or two of these guys in the whole game, I'd be fine with it. You could just see it as a fun reference to Dark Souls 1. But they're EVERYWHERE! I could easily make top 10 Earth Tree avatars in Elden Ring and I considered doing that as a joke. But I don't want to spend any effort talking about these shitty fights. I know FromSoft didn't. This here, ladies and gentlemen, is a flower. Now what can I say about a flower? It has petals. It can even kinda attack you if you get close, and it can spew poison that lasts forever and, well, the room is pretty tiny so there's barely any places to hide from it. But it's still easy because it's a goddamn flower. It can't even move. It's just boring, that's all. FromSoft, what are you doing? Last time you made a proper dragon boss, you created Darky the mid -ear. That was an amazing boss, how have we fallen so far from that? There's a billion of this type of dragons in the game, but only the decaying and the freezing fog variants have these awfully massive AoEs. I don't mind the ice dragon that much though, since at least the frozen lake is a nice big flat area, so it works well enough. But here the terrain is just awful. If it's not me getting stuck on a rock, then it's the boss doing that. It's an awful boss. Worm face. Fuck this guy. He's another boss that just forces you to run away from him, except instead of Scarlet Rot, it's Death Blight. And because he's so boring to fight, I just try to rush him and hope I kill him before he kills me. So this always ends with me either instantly dying to Death Blight, or the boss dying instantly to me. The only reason it's not at the very bottom is because at least it was cool when I first saw the towering monstrosity in Altus Plateau. Like, I can't say I had any excitement seeing the 10th Avatar. For this spot I'm gonna cheat and include several bosses, if you can call them that. And those guys are Esgar, Priest of Blood, Fierce Cux, Aiden and Roundtable Knight Vike. I know that's not every NPC boss, but don't worry, we'll get to the rest soon. But these fellas belong together because they're all extremely uninteresting at best, and very obnoxious at worst. I hate the dogs Esgar has, they're bugged and they can fucking one-shot you. I hate the skulls that Lionel summons that chase you to the ends of the earth, and for Vike and Aiden, I have no memory of what they do because I just go in and kill them. That's it. If they had any mechanics, they never lived long enough to show them. I don't like NPC bosses fundamentally, they tend to feel lazy and poorly balanced. But these guys in particular just suck. I mean, they're not Miriam levels, but no one is. Only Miriam is. Fuck you, Miriam. There's two ways of dealing with this boss. The hard way is fighting her while she's invisible and try to track her splashes in the water, and the easy way, which is to buy a sentry torch which just makes the boss visible. I know which one I prefer. I actually think she's a good enemy when you can actually fight her. But the problem is, that torch is sold by a random merchant deep into Aldous Plateau, whereas this cave is at the start of the region. So not only will most people not discover the merchant before the cave, but you'd also have to know that the torch works like that. So most of us will fight her while she's invisible, which makes for a garbage boss. Sure, you can see where she's roughly at with the water splashes, but that doesn't mean you can dodge her attacks with any consistency. And giving the invisible boss a heavily tracking grab that does crazy damage is just an invitation to endless frustration. Goatfroy. 
Goad Froy. The name of this boss alone makes him a laughing stock to me. They just really had to stick to the whole gimmick of naming everyone after George R. R. Martin's initials and... Well, they had Godric and Godfrey, so they just came up with Godfroy in probably half a second. And the fight is decent, I mean, it's just Godric again, so how can it not be? But the reason I hate it is because it lessens Godric himself. This guy isn't like an illusion or a ghost of Godric, as far as I know. This is just a different character. It takes away from how unique and cool Godric's design is, and for that, I think Godfroy is awful. I'd rather he didn't exist. I'm once again gonna have to cheat, because how the fuck would I rank these guys individually? I think it would just make for a boring video, because everything I have to say about any of them applies to all of them. And those guys are Clean Rock Knights, Rune Bear, Guardian Golem, Kindred of Rot, Stone Digger Troll, The Nox Duo, Scaly Misbegotten, Battle Mage Hugius, 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 Perfumer Trisha, Demi-Human Chiefs, Beastmen of Ferrum Azula, Mad Pumpkin Heads, and of course, Soldier of Godric the unbeatable force of nature. These guys are regular enemies, and they're fine as that, but not as fine as actual bosses. I did leave some that could be considered regular enemies out of this spot, because I think they work well enough as more notable foes. None of these guys do for me. And also, Miranda was a regular enemy too, but unlike these guys, she's bad as even a basic enemy. This is literally the Witch of Hemwick boss from Bloodborne, except even easier because the room isn't designed for a hide and seek. The real boss is the invisible snail, but you can always see where it is because the spot it's hiding at has a slight glow to it. Now, there is a big fuck off knight chasing you, but he's not persistent enough to pose a threat if you just run around the room and ignore him. So this fight is pretty worthless, but I found it funny. I just didn't expect him to do this again, and I didn't expect him to make a little snail a boss. I don't really dislike this because it's kind of an interesting idea that the boss just copies you and you have to fight yourself. But at the same time, I feel insulted that I'm such a pushover. I literally end up killing a god by the end of the game and yet I'm about as weak as any other NPC invader. Thanks FromSoft. But it's funny how you can enter the fight without any weapons and then the mimic will try to just fist fight you to death. Gideon is a little bit better than the other NPC invaders because at least he poses an actual threat and doesn't have dogs with him. And I found it cool how he uses pretty much every spell in the game, as well as other boss abilities. Him knowing every incantation fits with him being the all-knowing and everything, but unfortunately, he's a fucking annoying spammer. Like, oh my god, he's just obnoxious to fight. Each of his spells do insane damage too, so the super quick pace just doesn't make for a well-balanced fight. The only thing I really enjoy is how after killing him, he says, It sets the stage for the finale of the game where you pull off the impossible. That's right, Patches. I think he's the best NPC boss in the game, though he's still in the bat tier because it's a shit fight. But no other fight amused me as much as this one. We didn't get Patches in Sekiro, so I almost missed the guy, and I was so happy to see him just being his usual asshole self. And unlike any other boss in the series, he surrenders halfway through the fight and you can choose to either kill him or spare him. And if you spare him, he'll just go back to his usual asshole antics, and we all love him for it. I mean, I guess all of that does sound similar to Great Shinobi Owl and Sekiro. I guess he's kind of the patches of Sekiro then. I could do the same I did for Cemetery Shade and just have footage of me obliterating the boss in an instant, but I'd rather say this for the Demi-Human Queens. They should have put one of these as the tutorial boss instead of Soldier of Godric. Obviously because Soldier of Godric is too hard, but this would have been an actually decent enough starter fight. But they have no business being all the way up in Aldous Plateau. By that point they're easier than regular enemies. I feel maybe I'm being a little too generous putting this boss outside the bat tier. It's obviously a complete joke of a fight. But I thought the concept of this was really cool. A skeleton sailing around on a ghostly boat and he can attack you with the boat. That's fucking great. I wish everything else was on point as the design though, because they're not much more than teleporting punching bags. I think the best variety of them is the one I found between Mount Gelmir and Altus Plateau. The area is designed more like a labyrinth, which makes finding the boss trickier when he teleports, and this time he can summon High Lord Walnirs. But other than that, they're really not that special. 
These guys will either be slightly dangerous or not at all based on a single factor. Do you have a big dick weapon? If you do, you'll just stagger them with every single hit and they can't do anything about it. If you don't, well, there's still nothing too crazy, but I'd rather get the staggers so I don't have to deal with the oddly timed sword swings. I like how cool they are though, they're basically huge elves from space using gravity magic. I felt this boss was just an attempt at recapturing the Vanguard from Demon Souls, or even Genichiro from Sekiro, where you're very much intended to die and that's your introduction to the suffering that follows for the rest of the game. However, I like that Vanguard and Genichiro are both very much beatable. Crafted Scion is as well, technically, but I find it a lot trickier because these flailing crap spider guys are just really oddly animated. I can't really predict their moves too well at all, and one false read and you're pretty much dead. It's not a bad enemy, but I don't think this really makes for the most impressive intro. I'd rather they save this monster for Stormvale Castle, where there's better build up for it. I'm sure a lot of people think I'm being generous for not putting this one in the garbage with the other awful tier bosses, or with the spot with all the other regular enemies as bosses, but I think these guys are rare enough that I'm okay with counting it as a mini boss instead of a regular enemy, and it's fine as a mini boss. At first I found it extremely annoying until I realized the fight is just about teaching you not to roll backwards. It exploits the most instinctual panicky thing you could ever do in these games and I like that. I also like when they disappear and reappear, growl loudly and then spew poison. Just the sound makes me shit my pants whenever he does it. But obviously in the grand scheme of things when we put the royal revenants up against actual bosses with multiple faces and cutscenes, it'll have to be in the mediocre tier. I felt Omen Killer was just a better nod to Dark Souls than the Earth Tree avatars. It's obviously Capra Demon, and considering they put dogs all around him, it seems like they weren't intending to disguise it. Thankfully, this time you can kill the dogs before the boss even aggroes. However, like Capra Demon, Omen Killer is pretty helpless without them. I like that his moves are slightly altered to throw you off, but it's not enough to make a slow Dark Souls 1 enemy a real challenge in Elden Ring, where regular enemies have more mechanics than the bosses did in that game. This boss just comes out of nowhere when you're about to approach a soldier of Godric? And then the screen fades to black. Probably the soldier of Godric killing you so fast you couldn't even see it. And this is hell. But the uh, duo fight isn't really that at all. They're just slowly walking towards you, so it's very easy to kill one before the other one can join the fight. So really, it's just two back-to-back -back omen fatties. They're decent enough enemies, so I can't say it's a bad boss. But it's pretty much just two regular enemies with a kind of cool presentation. These guys will live up to their name and abduct your virginity if you happen to get killed by a specific one at the bottom of Raya Lucaria. Which is a thing I didn't know for the longest time, but hey, I liked it when they did this whole kidnap thing in Bloodborne, and I like it now too. The boss itself is just two abductors, nothing too special. I do think the two of them work decently well together. Both are pretty slow, and the one with the Whirling Exhaust is a lot more aggressive, while the one with the Sickles tends to stay back and fire at you from a distance. I can't say I love it, because at the end of the day, it is just two frequently seen enemies, but put together in a room and given a boss health bar. So, as with a lot of bosses that have multiple variants, I'll just pick one that sticks out the most. And with Crystallians, it's gotta be the Scarlet Rot trio. Now, why did FromSoft think this boss needed to inflict Scarlet Rot on you? I do not know. I don't think it adds anything of value whatsoever. As for the boss itself, if you happen to watch my first Elden Ring boss ranking, I said at the beginning of that video that a lot of the gang bosses in this game were dog shit, and I listed Crystallians as one of them. But the truth is, I had only heard that they exist, but I never found it myself until not too long ago. It sounds abysmal on paper, but after trying it out myself, it's honestly not that bad. The spellcaster is very passive, the one with the ring blade doesn't interfere too much either, so you can pretty much just focus on the spear user and occasionally avoid whatever the other two throw at you. Doesn't mean it's very fun, but I can't make an argument for why they're bad, other than the Scarlet Rod, I guess. Valiant Gargoyles are fine, that's all. I don't really like them because the only special move they have that's unique to this boss alone is the Poison Breath that covers a massive area. And not only does it poison you, but it does contact damage. A lot of it. But all things considered, they do work okay enough as a duo. And I do appreciate how much space there is in the arena, it's much needed. When I first did it, I thought the fight was awful, but there's one thing people have to keep in mind, myself included. Elden Ring isn't Dark Souls. 
Lots of Souls players look down on summons, but Spirit Ashes are a core mechanic, and I can't imagine a better time to use them than for duo fights like this. So I don't think I can really say it's bullshit. And individually I think the gargoyles are pretty cool. I like how they can switch between weapons and even do weapon swap attacks. And despite being tall enemies, you can pretty much always see what they're doing. Man, we've been having a lot of gank bosses almost back to back. But the good news is that we've pretty much run out of them, meaning the Godskin duo is, I guess, the best one then. It's not any better design than the others really, it just comes down to personal preference. And I've had fun times doing this boss. Music is obviously a big part of that, it's one of the best soundtracks in the game. And there's a nice variety you get with this fight. You can battle both of them in their normal phases, you can see both of their second forms, and because they keep dying and reappearing, you'll kinda go back and forth between them. But even though I enjoy it, I can't put it in the decent tier because they're really badly balanced. If you fight them solo, the first 30 seconds is the hardest testicular torsion of a fight in the game. But after killing one, the rest is kind of a joke really, and if you use spirit ashes, then the entire fight is a joke. I wish the ultimate godskin was just a single boss that uses moves from both the skinny and the fatty, somehow. Not sure how that would work, but I bet it would be better than this. Magma Worms are like phase 2 of Midir, except if he only did the double rampage move. You know, the one where he goes off on a walk for a while. Magma Worms tend to do the same, and it's really annoying. When they do let you fight them, they're very average. Even the variants that have a second phase just don't really do much for me. They have the same problem as many other big bosses, where you can only see their feet and have a tough time telling what attack they're doing because the rest of their body is off-screen. And they're not very good at punishing you for getting behind them or under them, so... Pretty underwhelming bosses for having such a cool design. Also, I don't understand why they're placed where they are. Why is there one in a crystal mine in Kaelid? This fucking thing wouldn't even fit through doors! And even more out of place is the one in Consecrated Snowfield of all places. In my opinion, they should be exclusive to Mount Gelmir, they're a perfect fit for its volcanic aesthetic. Plus, that way I wouldn't have to see them all throughout the game. These guys are basically the Nazgul, and appropriate to their name, they only appear at night. Coming across one of these the first time was fun. Then you see him again, and again, and again, and again! I don't know if I can hate them for it though, because they literally appear in 9 different spots. If you're gonna reuse the Nazgul, then doing it 9 times is something I can kinda get behind. Although in one spot there's 2 of them at once, so there's actually 10 of them. <sighs> Damn it FromSoft, you got so close! The fights themselves are decent, but nothing noteworthy really. At least it's a very different horseback boss than the Tree Sentinels, and I like that. These guys play with the same rules as the player, since their horse has its own separate health bar and you can dismount them. They're pretty pathetic on foot though. I found Discount Sif to be kind of annoying to fight against, because she moves around all over the place, jumps out of your reach and shoots spells at you. But at least she has very little health, which makes it fair for slower builds. The magic sword moves do look pretty nice though. Other than that, I don't really have anything to say about the fight. It's a perfectly fine mid-tier mini-boss. I don't mind it existing. Flying Dragon Agil? More like Flying Dragon AGAIN! Something is off if by the end of the game I'm sick and tired of dragons and don't want to see more of them. Not just because they're usually the same boss, but because that same boss was never very good to begin with. But in a vacuum, if Flying Dragon Agil was the only one of these to exist, I'd probably put it around here, in the decent tier. It's a perfectly functional boss and it was definitely cool coming across it first playthrough. I didn't expect such an imposing foe so early on. Then again, I had just died to Crafted Scion and the Tree Sentinel, so what did I expect? At least the dragons are some of the few bosses in this game that work on horseback. Most field bosses I'd rather do on foot so I can iframe their attacks, but with the dragons, outspacing is usually the better option. I'm indeed rating the godskins on their own and not just as the duo, because I think they're well designed enough to work as solo bosses. They have more moves than most other mini bosses, so why not? The Nobles are not as fun for me as the Apostles though. They have such a weird mix up of super quick long range pokes and slow slam attacks. Some follow up moves come so fast you have to know they're coming before the animation even starts if you want to be able to dodge them. I think they should have just made the Nobles slow. That way they would work better for the duo version as well. Another thing that prevents me from liking them as much as the Apostles is the everlasting roll in phase 2. And I mean that, it seems to be able to last fucking forever until it one day hits you, then it stops. This move I'm only okay with in boss arenas that have pillars, but sometimes you encounter the boss in places without any, so that sucks. At least it looks funny. Most of this guy's moves do. 
If Malekith and a Valiant Gargoyle fucked and had a baby, this would be it. The Blackblade Kindred has the moveset of the Gargoyles, but the fucking ridiculous damage and health sap of Malekith. The super attacks were already dangerous, but with the Blackblade buff, it's just shit your pants scary. Still, I praise the Valiant Gargoyles for working well despite their size, and the same must be said for this one as well. And even though the damage is a bit much, it is just a single Gargoyle, so that's why it's a tier above the duo. I really wish they had a better soundtrack though. They deserve more than just a low-key mini-boss theme. Also, there's another Blackblade Kindred in Dragon Barrow, but let's ignore that one. Just because the sloped hill makes for such an annoying platform for a boss fight. And I'm so thankful we don't have a Blackblade Kindred duo. That would be the worst. These watch cats aren't the most complex bosses, they're not really much more intricately designed than some regular enemies, but I love the way they're animated. It's just creepy and unnatural. Especially when they start walking on their hind legs and instantly turn to attempt to strike you, or when they turn their heads 180 degrees. There are quite a few variants of them and even a duo version, but these guys don't really have one specific variant that sticks out the most, so they can just share the spot, whatever. Though most likely, the one you find first will be your favorite just for the reaction you'll have. That's the best thing about them. These weird snake worms scratch the dragon boss itch better than most actual dragons in this game for me. Though, please, FromSoft, don't put these guys in tiny rooms, okay? Not only are they massive in size, but they fly and jump around everywhere, so it can be really hard to see what's going on sometimes. But if they're out in the open, I think they're quite well designed. I especially like their grab move and how if you dodge it, they'll follow it up by breathing fire, or whatever that's supposed to be. They do have a variant with a second phase, though the changes are very subtle. As far as I can tell, the only difference is the tail swipes and the music changing a bit. But the thing I like more about the tree spirits in comparison to most dragons is that they don't force you to run away from them by breathing fire on the ground, which way too many dragon bosses do. And also, you don't have to worry about getting under them or behind them. Positioning isn't really a worry here, you just press dodge and you're good. This game is less horror-centric than Bloodborne, but when it does go for creepy enemy designs, it goes all out. Like, good god, look at these things! Everything about them is just wrong. You just want to make them stop existing in the same universe as you. Which is easier said than done, because that fucking fire will get you no matter where you hide. At around half health, the birds buff themselves, and now a lot of their attacks will leave a little bit of fire on the ground, but that fire quickly spreads everywhere, and not only does it hurt, but it also staggers you. It's hard to predict sometimes where it's gonna go until it's too late. That's what I'm not a fan of in this fight. Everything else is pretty good, though. I like the Reign of Swords move, it looks cool. I like how you can avoid the Blight Screech by just hugging the boss, and overall, it's just a solid moveset. Not crazy good, but enough to be a high decent tier boss. But the best decent tier boss for me is Ancient Dragon Lanciax. I did say the Tree Spirits are better than most dragons, but all the Lightning Dragons are just way cooler. But this one, Lanciax, doesn't quite live up to the hype she built up when she first appeared at the start of Altus Plateau. She disappears before you can do much to her, and if you want to find her again, you'll need to go to a secluded spot elsewhere at night time for some reason. I like when bosses like Knight's Cavalry or Death Birds only show up at night, but I don't see a reason for this one to do so. Clearly, it had no problem attacking me in broad daylight before, so why is it being shy now? Oh well, doesn't really matter, I guess. The boss is pretty cool, but I do find that it's kinda invalidated by two things later on in the game. There's the Lich Dragon, which is just a better version of this boss, and then there's almost exact copies of Lanciax all over Farumazula. The main difference is that this one can be fought on horseback, and it does make it different enough from the rest. It's a fair bit easier, but at least you don't have to run after the boss whenever it flies away. And the music is short but sweet. I like it. But that's it for part 1 of this ranking. Part 2 will probably come a fair bit sooner than this one did, since I now know what I'm doing. It just took forever to decide how I'd approach this ranking and which bosses I should include. But thanks for watching the first half of the ranking, and I hope you'll stick around for the rest and won't get too mad when I show you the correct opinions on this game's best bosses. Bye.